Take CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, the annual confab that's become a right-wing love fest for the man who made Navalny's murder all about him, Donald Trump. While the Republican Party falls in line with Trump's fondness for Russia's dictator, a short time ago, attendees heard from a different autocrat, this one from El Salvador. You've probably never heard of Nayib Bukele. He was just reelected in a curious landslide last month. He's also branded himself as the world's coolest dictator and a philosopher king. The cool part is debatable. The dictator part is real. Bukele is an elder millennial, a bro populist who loves Bitcoin and tweeting. But he has suppressed rights in his country under a state of emergency. He's cracked down on judicial independence. His war on gangs has jailed thousands of innocent people. He's bent on destroying democracy in El Salvador. Those are just some of the reasons human rights groups think he's a nightmare. But CPAC thinks he's a model for America. CPAC has long had a Eurasian dictator fetish. Hungary's Viktor Orban is a perennial CPAC favorite. And of course, there's Vlad Putin. But this year, America's right wing is going all in on the Latin American strongman model. Javier Millet, Argentina's self-proclaimed anarcho-capitalist president, will speak on Saturday. The MAGA crowd surmises that if these two dictator types are sort of likable, particularly to misogynistic male incel voters like the ones who elected Millet, why not sell Trump as America's cool dictator? That started in earnest with the rollout of his tacky gold Trump high tops at SneakerCon for some outreach to young male attendees. After the limited edition $400 T is for treason sneakers sold out, a Fox commentator named Brandon Arroyo boasted about how they were a great way to attract the blacks. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Huh. Is that completely and cluelessly racist? Why, yes, it is. But this self-proclaimed expert on black voters based entirely on stereotypes he likely gleaned from old rap videos he binged on BET After Dark does have a point about the importance of the culture. Republicans have long since lost the culture, not just when it comes to entertainment, fashion, comedy, gender expression, women's right to be something other than incubators who make sandwiches on the side, civil rights, voting rights, and really everything about the world after 1930. So the ugly sneakers, like recruiting tax cut loving rappers as Trump's new besties, are very intentional parts of the strategy to take back this country by pitching Trump as a dictator who's fun and cool. The kids love it. Because Republicans know they will never get consent to drag women and people of color and LGBTQ people back to the world pre the World War II era through the ballot box. They're cruel and awful, but they can count. So they intend to take the culture backward by force and impose their brand of Christo fascism on the majority over our objections. It's already happening in Alabama, where which threw, which threw, which threw open the doors to the theocratic future that MAGA fascists want this week, when the state Supreme Court Chief Justice Tom Parker invoked God in deciding that frozen embryos should be considered children. Media Matters reports that Chief Justice Parker is a big believer in Christian nationalism and went on a QAnon conspiracist show to talk about it. Parker indicated that he is a proponent of the Seven Mountain Mandate, a theological approach that calls on Christians to impose fundamentalist values on all aspects of American life. He also claimed that God created government and said it's heartbreaking that we have let it go into the possession of others. So Chief Justice Parker's attempt at repossessing government means that the two largest IVF clinics in Alabama have now paused activities because they don't know their legal risks. It will only be a matter of time before Republicans impose the kind of Christian nationalist Gilead we already see in Alabama and Mississippi and Florida and Tennessee and Missouri and Oklahoma and Iowa on the rest of America. With a national 16-week abortion ban, the likely curtailment of women's access to contraception while forcing 12-year-olds to give birth after being raped, which is just was just this week the New York Times reported that Trump is privately telling people he's on board with. 
Of course, subjugating women to become forced birth chattel isn't very cool dictator to anyone other than disaffected incels. So back to CPAC, where they're going overtime to sell Trump as the one true savior against the rest of us godless liberals. Trump's only crime is representing the American people first. They know a lot of these people are going to go to jail when Donald Trump gets elected. And I'm going to be right there helping. President Trump would declare him a terrorist organization. He would send a hellfire rocket down there. He would take the cartels out. The MAGA faithful at CPAC are also trying to up the cool dictator factor with this year's crop of Trump merch. Like the insurrection-themed pinball game, J6 Insurrection, that plays videos of the insurrection while you play the game. I'm sure the yucks are lost on the families of the law enforcement officers who died or were injured on January 6th. It's hard to think of anything more repulsive than to see the attempt to overthrow American democracy reduced to player mode, stop the steal. These people are telling you exactly who they are, folks. Here's what MAGA Pizzagate influencer Jack Prasobiak said at one of the breakout sessions today. Welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> we're here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will, we, we will endeavor to, forget, oh, oh, oh. to get rid of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, right. here. Amen. That's right, because all glory, all glory is not to government, all glory to God. Mm. If their attempt to market dictatorship to Americans is successful, scaring is caring, we're in for a lot worse. As historian Nancy McLean writes in The New Republic, lurking behind the full frontal assault by Donald Trump and his enablers lies a far more far-reaching threat. If the Republicans gain control of both houses of Congress, expect a state-authorized constitutional convention to eviscerate core rights and protections most Americans hold dear. And Nancy McLean joins me now. She's the author of Democracy in Chains, the deep history of the radical rights stealth plan for America. Also joining me, former Republican congressman and MSNBC political analyst David Jolly. Nancy McLean, I want to let you say more. What is this plan for America that is lurking behind the 2024 election? Yes, thank you, Joy. It's great to be with you again. Yes. So this is really uh, serious stuff. We are talking about uh, an incredibly radical vision of America that you just described, you know, was on display at the CPAC convention. But this time it would be made permanent by a nuclear option that exists in the Constitution's Article 5, which talks about how we amend uh, the Constitution. And that Constitution has been amended 27 times, um, most of them good by the people and things that <laughs> had full sunshine and lots of public discussion. If anything, you know, many have thought the Constitution is too hard to amend. Uh, but the, the Constitution also has another um, measure in it that says that two thirds of the states can convene, can demand that Congress convene a constitutional convention um, if they so authorize. And as we have been transfixed by uh, Donald Trump um, and other parts of the MAGA movement, in fact, the political right, and this is the combination of big money donors like the Koch Network, the U-Lanes, et cetera, uh, on the one hand, and then this MAGA base that you've described so well on the other. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble with the lighting here. Um, they have come together to push for this constitutional convention. They've been pushing it out to the states since 2013 through the American Legislative Exchange Council. They now claim, well, they now have 28 of the 34 authorizations needed. What's really frightening, though, over the last uh, year or two is that they have realized that they will never get to 34 honestly. <laughs> so they have come up with a new math that they call aggregation. They're going to take any authorization for a constitutional convention left on the books in America and use that in order to insist that a new Congress call this convention. And what Mike is Johnson, it that they want to do with it? What do they want to change about the Constitution? They want to radically transform it. The leader of this effort, a man named Mark Meckler, uh, formerly head of Tea Party Patriots, now head of the Convention of States efforts, has said that they seek to roll back 115 years of progressivism. Now, that sounds like big talk for a guy in a bar or something, but the fact of the matter is they have been steadily doing this 
our side has not been paying adequate attention. Uh, and if the Republicans manage to get hold of Congress and Mike Johnson is the Speaker of the House, he's a deep supporter. He unites both those wings mm -hmm. of the Republican Party, the fossil fuel billionaires with the theocrats. And he will, I believe, and so does Common Cause and others who study yeah. this, convene such a convention. So this is something that would take away, has the potential in the various uh, amendments they've proposed to undermine the, the fiscal basis of Social Security and Medicare, to undermine long established civil rights protections, to take away our capacity to protect the environment. So it could not be more serious. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that needs much more attention from all of us.